Hello everyone, welcome back to Chemical Engineering and Aspen channel. As you know, these days we are focusing on the module of Chemical Reaction Engineering. So in this regard, we are bringing the lecture number 24 for our valuable viewers. I am your course instructor, Dr. Muhammad Haris Humayun. So in today's course coverage, we will talk about the tubular reactors from the chapter number 5 related to isothermal design or we can say our building block number 4, isothermal design from the book of Elements of Chemical Reaction Engineering by H. Scott Fogler. In the tubular reactor, we will first derive some equations for liquid phase and gas phase system and then we will study some rule of thumb in the system. So in the tubular reactors, we say that the gas phase reactions are carried out primarily in tubular reactors where the flow is generally turbulent. Once we started the tubular reactors or plug flow reactors in chapter number one or building block number one, the starting videos on chemical reaction engineering, we have said that it is primarily used for the gas phase systems. Or also we assumed that there are no radial variations or no dispersions in the system. There is only axial variation in terms of temperature, velocity, concentration or rate of reaction. So accordingly that's how we said that tubular reactor as the plug flow reactor as you can see in this diagram as well. Plug flow, no radial variations in velocity, concentration, temperature or rate of reactions. Now we will go one by one to develop the design equations for tubular reactors because we are studying the chapter related to the isothermal design. For pressure drop or heat exchange in the tubular reactors, we will use the equation Fa0 dx over dv is equal to minus Ra. We had already developed that equation in our previous chapters. For no pressure drop or no heat exchange, we will use the integral form of equation V is equal to Fa0 integral 0 to x dx over minus R. So once there is a pressure drop or heat exchange in the system, we will use the differential equation. Once there is no pressure drop or heat exchange, we will use the integral form of equation. So let's assume a reaction in which two moles of A reacts to produce products and it is an irreversible reaction. So accordingly, we will write its straight law as minus Ra is equal to KCA square. If we are assuming that it is elementary system. Now for the liquid phase system, we say V is equal to V0. There is no change in the volumetric flow rate. So accordingly, dx over dV is equal to minus Ra over Fa0. Minus Ra is KCA square divided by Fa0. Now applying the stoichiometry concept, we say C of A is equal to F of A over V. This is the volumetric flow rate V and F is the molar flow rate. And F of A is equal to Fa0 into 1 minus x over V0, where V is equal to V0. So accordingly, Fa0 over V0 which goes to Ca0 into 1 minus x. Once we combine these, we say dx over dV is equal to minus Ra over Fa0, minus Ra is equal to KCA square, and C is equal to Ca0 into 1 minus x. So accordingly, it will be KCA0 square into 1 minus x whole square divided by Fa0. Now, accordingly, once we rearrange it, we say V is equal to Fa0 KCA0 square integral 0 to x dx over 1 minus x raised to power 2. Obviously, we have rearranged it and we have then taken the integral of it. Accordingly, Fa0 is equal to V0 CA0. So, that CA0 is cancelled out with the CA0 and accordingly, we get V0 over KCA0 and this integral solves to give x over 1 minus x. On evaluating, we say that tau actually, once we take V0 over here, that will be capital V which is the volume over volumetric flow rate and that is the space time and that is equal to 1 over KCA0 into x over 1 minus x. Or we can say x is equal to, once we rearrange it, tau KCA0 over 1 plus tau KCA0. That, that tau KCA0 is actually the Dempolar number for the second order system if you go back to our previous lectures. So accordingly that tau KCA0 is goes to DA2, Dempolar number for second order system over 1 plus DA2. For first order, if you remember, it was tau K. For second order, it was tau K C A naught. So that is the derivation for the liquid phase system in plug flow reactors or tubular reactors. For gas phase system, it is not that simple. Actually, it is V is equal to V naught, and then these terms 1 plus epsilon x, P naught over P, T over T naught. So once we apply the stoichiometry, we say C of A is equal to F of A over V, F A naught into 1 minus x. V0 over 1 plus epsilon x, P0 over P, T over T0. Note that Fa0 over V0 will be Ca0. 
into 1 minus x over 1 plus epsilon x. Now we are assuming that there is no pressure drop in the system, so P0 will be equal to P. No change in temperature because it's an isothermal system, P over T0 will be cancelled out. So accordingly, C is equal to C0 1 minus x over 1 plus epsilon x. If you remember our stoichiometry chapter, we had derived that over there as well. Accordingly, once we combine this dx over dv is equal to minus r over f a naught minus r is k c a square and that c a is equal to c a naught so that is c a naught square 1 minus x whole square 1 plus epsilon x whole square and f a naught goes to v naught c a naught so that c a naught cancel out with the c a naught accordingly and then we integrate it we get v is equal to v naught over k c a naught integral 0 to x 1 plus epsilon x over 1 minus x whole raised to power 2 into dx and once we evaluate it, we get this equation V is equal to V naught over K C A naught, and that integral is solved as 2 epsilon 1 plus epsilon natural over 1 minus x plus epsilon square x plus 1 plus epsilon whole square x over 1 minus x. So, this is the overall representation for the second order system for the gas phase system in tubular reactors. Now, now the value of this integral is provided in the appendix of this book so you can go there and you can simply do it and i would also suggest you that now once after studying this you solve it for the first order system and see what is the variation in the system last we talk about the rule of thumb or effect of epsilon on conversion we said that v is equal to v naught 1 plus epsilon x p naught over pt over t naught for isothermal system, P over T naught is cancelled out and for no change in pressure, P naught over P is cancelled out. So accordingly, we say V is equal to V naught 1 plus epsilon x. Now before we move forward, let's recall the concept of epsilon that it was sigma Y naught. Y naught was the mole fraction of the limiting reactant in the feed or initially and sigma was change in total number of moles divided by moles of the limiting reactant A fat. So accordingly, there are three concepts. Number one is that sigma is zero, epsilon is zero. Accordingly, when sigma is zero, the number of moles of the reactants are equal to the number of moles of the products. So accordingly, we say that the fluid moves through, through the reactor at the constant volumetric flow rate as the conversion increases. So there is no change in the volumetric flow rate of the system once the value of sigma is zero. And accordingly, when sigma is zero, then epsilon will obviously be zero. Case number two, decrease in number of moles. Sigma is less than zero. The number of moles of product are less than the number of moles for the reactants. Like if you see the case for ammonia production, that N2 plus 3H2 goes to 2NH3. So once you calculate it, you will get the answer of sigma in negative or less than zero. So accordingly, this epsilon will be less than zero. So the volumetric gas flow rate will decrease with the increase in conversion, which means that the gas molecules will spend more time in the reactor than they would be if flow rate was constant. So obviously the residence time of the reactants will increase or the gas molecules will increase in the reactor. And obviously for the third case, or entirely opposite of it, that the volumetric flow rate will increase with the increase in conversion, which means that they will spend the less time in the reactor. And accordingly, this diagram is also able to represent it that for sigma is equal to 0 and for epsilon is equal to 0, the line is straight or sigma is less than 0, the line you can see it is decreasing and for sigma is greater than 0, the line, the trend is increasing. The increasing trend shows that the volumetric flow rate is increasing because on the x-axis you can see it is V over V0, final flow rate over initial flow rate. The overall answer is increasing so, which means that the final flow rate is increasing well in this case it is decreasing which means that the molecules gas molecules are spending more time in the reactor while here the molecules are spending less time in the reactor and the this case is that there is no change in the volumetric flow rate so that is the overall representation of today's lecture and i hope you have understood all the aspects of this lecture if you have any query feedback suggestion please provide it in the comment box and i would be happy to answer it so that's it from this video thank you so much please do watch like share the video and subscribe to this channel also click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel till then it's goodbye stay tuned for more exciting videos on this channel